नमस्कार आई एम जय कुमार जे रावल आई कम फ्रॉम शिंदखेड़ा कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी सो शिंदखेड़ा इज द नॉर्दर्न पार्ट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र इन नॉर्दर्न महाराष्ट्र देर इज अ डिस्ट्रिक्ट कॉल धूले इन धूले देर इज अ शिंदखेड़ा तहसील एंड आई रिप्रेजेंट दैट शिंदखेड़ा कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी आई एम जय कुमार रावल एज आई सेड आई बिलोंग टू अ स्मॉल प्रिंसिपैलिटी अ रॉयल फैमिली विच यूज टू बी देयर इन शिंदखेड़ा इन डोंडाइचा so northern maharashtra has got a lot of uh, small royal families there and i'm i'm a part of that when maharashtra was uh, in the making in the first assembly in 1952 my grandfather respected dada saheb rawal was uh, the youngest legislator in that assembly and uh, uh, he started industry in then and he was quite a revolutionary personality he was a freedom fighter a young freedom fighter he started the swadharak vidyarthi sanstha which means that khud ka uddhar karo swa ka uddhar karke fir apne desh ke liye lado so he started some schools colleges then and he started the district bank he started the polytechnic college and about 50 years back he started an industry he traveled america in the 70s and he started an industry so uh, when i was young of course i had the legacy being from uh, that kind of family so i had a lot of uh, family friends i used to visit people and i thought of doing things but as time uh, flew i went to the uk in uk while i was doing my management in cardiff university i entered politics there and i was uh, representing the management at the university i was one of the first asians indians to do that in about 100 years and then many elections in the nus the national union of students i won and then that started my political career once i came back to india i joined my business i was an uh, entrepreneur for uh, about a year i was doing good business i used to travel the country travel abroad but that was not satisfying i thought i should do something more when i used to go back to my town i love my town i love my village i love my people so they said that you should come and stay with us and do things so i decided that i'll go and work there i started my career as a municipal corporator so there was a election in 2001 and after doing my management i stood for uh, the councilor's post and my mother became the mayor and we won with the highest votes i won with the highest votes i was the leader of the house and then there was no looking back after an councilor i was a councilor for 2 3 years after that i became the member of the legislative assembly fortunately thanks to the people this is the fourth term i am the legislator and around three terms i have won by a lead of around 45000 to 50000 votes lead so that has been uh, my usp but my experience is uh, on one side uh, it was a, a very backward region it was uh, we 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 used to call this to call dhule a very tribal and backward region so we had a lot of drought situation so the first time i won i used my management i took all the officers to every village and i made a list of the questions what would arise made there what is the irrigation facility what is the drinking water facility what is the toilet facility what are the demands what are the problems what are the issues so i made a data bank of all this and then i made item wise i made a data bank like where we need water uh, for drinking where do we need irrigation where do we need roads where do we need toilets where do we need libraries and i made a whole road map and i decided that for the uh, next couple of years i'm going to work on that and the journey started fortunately i have seen that if you are persistent enough and if you are looking for doing something all the projects which i thought of and dreamt 90% of the projects are completed in these 17 18 years and i'm proud to say that my my constituency is inkeda which was a drought area they used to call it the dpap area is a drought stricken area now 70% of it is completely irrigated and we are doing good for ourselves so i had a three three agenda mantra which was i called it the irrigation education and industrialization the irrigation education and industrialization so first you irrigate all the fields get water to the farmers once the water comes to the farmers the farmers start doing well then 
you educate the children you give them facilities and once they educate the children then you look for employment so this is something which is a continuous process so keep irrigating the farms once they start becoming richer they want to educate the children their daughters their sons once you educate them then you ne- you need to look for industries so all these three have been working in tandem and i've been able to do that so there's a lot of irrigation which has happened with the irrigation there is a lot of uh, education sector we built a knowledge city and many other players have come in so there's engineering pharmacy agriculture primary education secondary phd everything is there and after that we have got uh, wonder cement we've got ultra tech cement we've got other industries who have come in chemical industries who have come in and the jindal power and so many other who have come in my constituency in these 10 15 years and we can see a sea of change so from roads to railway we've got a direct train from mumbai thanks to modi ji that we've got a, a direct train comes from mumbai to my town every morning and you can do up down so a lot of people have started coming to mumbai shopping in mumbai studying in mumbai coming for medical facilities to mumbai so in fact what i saw when i started my political career sometimes when i used to go back to my friends in uk or i am in a uh, meeting with industrialists with the people they said what do you do so i used to tell them that i am a i am an industrialist i used to feel shy shameful of saying that i am a legislator why because uh, unfortunately bollywood has portrayed us the villains the the corrupt people the gunda guys are the politicians which is not true in fact if you look at the other side of an mla he gives a lot he sacrifices a lot when i have to choose if it's my son's birthday i'll say that i'll go to it or may not celebrate it but if somebody important his son's birthday i'll go for that so we lose a lot on our personal life many a times there are occasions where we need to be for our family but we choose otherwise we choose our public responsibilities more for that and we keep on working day in and day out people don't look at that hardship what we face sometimes i think that you know people at large public at large are little rude they want to make you work and if you're tired they say get out we want somebody new fresh who's more energetic sometimes there's a lot of tyag there's a lot of balidan there's a lot of uh, sacrifices which we do which people don't understand we don't want to become hutatma leaders or we don't want us to become heroes at least the acknowledgement should be there sometimes when we go to people always we see that you know every newspaper every channel everybody there's anything wrong in the country the politician is responsible and they blame it very easily they always want to say that the politicians are this what about us when we talk about our rights when we talk about our adhikar we should know also our responsibility in a democracy it's not only about the leader it's about the public what what we have the sample is the same so what we are when it comes to my son's admission you want that you know mr mla get my son's admission done but when it comes to others you say why is there this cutting of queue so we have to follow self discipline in india if you need to change we need to change our mindset the british mindset we know need to let it go and we all should feel that india is ours we should work for it for me i feel that you know this one life which i had i had so many choices i belong to a esteemed family i had an industrial background i had everything to take care of i made i made my choice i lost a lot but at the same time i gained a lot so i'm feeling proud that i could achieve so much do so much for people in that one life and in politics i feel that if you decide and genuinely pursue anything you can achieve it there are so many schemes i thought which would never happen but all those schemes have happened irrigation has come wells have come roads have come and everybody loves me the best part is after your hard work if people appreciate that and say that this good work you've done which we appreciate it gives you the strength and i think there are good people in the society also who appreciate your hard work i think we have spent one of this this one life which we had with all our sacrifices we've spent it for our country and i think it's well done so let's hope we all join together to work for the betterment of our country and each one is contributing in his own way there's a new sense of unitedness we all feel that we need to do something i think it's easy to suggest it is easy to criticize but it's harder to do so i think let's all do in speaking actions speak louder than words so let's all act 
let's all work together. I think whatever I could do, I've done, and we all need to do so many other things. I appreciate that this NLA, which was my dream. Every time, you know, you see, we put up a Facebook post, you see there are people who appreciate it. But you see people who are abusive towards you. You can't do anything to them. There are so many other things, you know, there are associations for everybody. But what about our woes, our problems? You see legislators, once they are the legislator, they get the respect. But once they are not a legislator, they are pushed away, they are heckled. Sometimes they don't have food for their family. Sometimes they are unemployed. Now they can't go and work somewhere. So they don't know what to do. And you see their families are starving. They are in poverty. There are numerous examples of MLAs, representatives I can give, who are striving, who are hard, who are under poverty. And so many more. You can always see the MLA, what salary gets. What salary gets? I am a management student. If I would have worked, I would have got lakhs of rupees as my salary. But I sacrificed that. That nobody wants to see. There are professors. There are chartered accountants. There are pilots. There are so many people. There are engineers who I know have joined politics for the betterment of the country. And they are working for it. They don't want anything from you. They just want your smile and your appreciation. And I think this one life which we have put in for our country, I think one should uh, uh, appreciate that. I think this NLA is going to be a good platform where we should go across party lines. We might have different parties, different ideologies, but we need to all sit together and make a roadmap. We have to plan what we have to do for our country. Sometimes I feel as a legislator, there is no inner democracy in parties also. If you speak your mind, your ticket might get cut. Tomorrow you might not become the minister. So you can't speak your mind. If you feel this is not right, this, was, this should happen for the country. You are an MLA. You are sitting on that post. You have an opportunity to voice your uh, concern in the Vidhan Sabha. But you cannot speak because you are bound by your party lines. I think that, those lines should also now should vanish. One should be able to give his free and frank opinion, at least in the assembly. And an MLA should not be bound by so many other things. There should also be meritiousness. What is an merit of becoming an MLA? What is the merit of becoming a ticket, giving you a ticket? What is the merit of cutting your ticket? What is the merit of become, becoming a minister or not a minister? Because some leader likes somebody, he is a minister. Somebody, some leader doesn't find you that appreciative, you are not a minister. So there is no merit. In every post, if you see, in corporate, in government, everywhere, merit plays a role. Unfortunately, in politics, uh, merit doesn't play much of a role. So, you work hard. After working hard, you come to a state. I think that all should be appreciated. And I think uh, now Indian democracy, after 75 years, is becoming more and more uh, is becoming more and more strong. And I think it's the best democracy. I would appreciate that NLA is an organization which we can go voice our concern, put our thoughts and speak what we want. So I think it's a very good initiative. I appreciate that. Sabki sangatna hai, vidhai ko bhi sangatna rahegi. Hamara awaz hum bulat kar sakenge. Hamari samasya, hamari vichar, hum is manch pe bol sakenge. Ye hume mil raha hai. Aur isi liye, ye baut khushi ki baat hai ke NLA ho raha hai. Hamari ya koshish hai rahegi ke har do saal mein ye NLA ki meeting ho. Sab log aaye, desh ke vibhinna pranto mein alag alag jaghe pe ho. हम लोग, we form the electoral electoral college of the president. When the president election is there, the electoral college consists of MLAs and MLCs. What happens? We are just voters. You go to the president election, you vote for who has decided. After that, we don't have the even never have been invited to the president house. I think in once in a year, once in five years at least the the president house should. Be considerate enough to call the voters to come and see what the president house is, what they want to tell the president, what the president wants to tell them. So I think we are not just mere voters, but we are representatives of lakhs of people. I think that weightage for an electorate in the presidential election should also be considered. There are so many other points which we can discuss, but I think we all should work for a better nation. We need to contribute. Suggestions are easy. Criticism is easy, but contribution is hard. You all need to work together. 
this one life which I have contributed or which I have which I am spending for my country, I am proud of it. And let's hope the betterment of our country happens in this Amrutkal, the 75 years of democracy. Thank you.